Hello, Cell Team 6. What's up, everybody? Well, it's just me right now. That's okay. We'll give it a second here and see if we get a few people in. Get excited. We've got some cool stuff to talk about today. Um, man, it's been an awesome week. I don't know. I never expected such a cool response out of what we just did. What's up, Ryan? But um, we have had a ton. Curtis, what's up, my man? We have had a ton of people trying to get their feet wet with this, and you'd be surprised how well it's gone. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of blown away. I'm excited. Um, I didn't get time to add up how much money I've saved people this week, but we've had quite a few people dipping into it. And um, I'm gonna give a few shout outs once we get filled up here a little bit. I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes. How are you guys doing? Good to see everybody. I don't wanna mess up your name. So you're gonna have to call me so I know how to pronounce that properly. What's up, buddy? Um, but guys, I am fired up. I'm telling you, we're getting ready to start a movement. We've had a ton of people calling me. I had like 50 people send me their numbers. People a little bit worried about it in the beginning because it is something new but i'll tell you what it's a lot easier than learning some of these carriers so i am really excited hey cassie what's going on i am really excited where we're going with this hey nick um it, it's gonna blow up guys carrie what's going on i'm gonna try to say hi to as many people as i can there's travis hey travis you're gonna get here we're gonna hear from something about travis here in a minute what i'm gonna do tonight is i'm gonna kind of give you guys a little bit of a shout out to some of the people that have been killing it what's up bruce justin how's everybody doing tonight thomas how are you um you guys are going to be blown away when you hear some of the numbers. Hey, Tony. Guys, you guys are going to be blown away by these numbers. I, I'm, I'm just surprised. And, you know, we just got started with this, you know. And there's a lot of people I've noticed that went back and watched the video. And um, I'm going to start off with the list here. I'm going to kind of go down some of the names. I hope I don't slaughter anybody's name because my handwriting is really messy. It's awful. Um, but let's go through this one. First person I want to talk about, Tim McCabe. He called me um, last week. And he saved a lady. Make sure I say this right. $1,320 a month on her bills, guys. So, what's up, Chris? Um, saved, a guy, saved a lady or her husband, or say it was a lady, saved her $1,320 annual bill savings on her bills. He sent me the bill. I helped him out. He did it. He, I think he said he wrote up around $2,000. He, he said he made $2,000, so I don't know what he wrote up. And he's supposed to go back Monday, so I'm, I'm anxious to talk to him later and see how that went. So, Tim, shout out to you, buddy. Uh, Peter Walker had posted something up. He had actually saved some people about $780 on cable bills and stuff. And guys, if I mess up, I'm sorry. I'm trying to make as many notes. I just decided to do this at the last minute. And I want to make sure you guys, people know that you're doing it, you know? And when we are doing this, we need to post this stuff up in the group and make sure that people know that it's going on because the more that do it, the more money we save. I'm actually going to try to get a thread going so we can just keep track of how much money we save people. What's up, Justin, Steven, Chaz, Jack? Um, let's see here. Travis Clark saved a family $1,260. That was their annual bill savings. Now, he said he's done this a lot more. He just hadn't posted it up yet, so I just pulled this one off the thread. I haven't got a chance to talk to him yet, but I'm excited about that. On three apps that he wrote up from that, I don't know how much AP he wrote up. I didn't get a chance to find that out, but $1,260 annual bill savings for one person. What's up, Chris? Matthew Murray saved a lady, and me and him talked today. It was his day he'd done this, and I think he's going to post something up later about it. He saved a lady $958, I believe it was, and he sent me the bill. We figured it out, and he did it. And he said it was a lot easier than what he thought it would be. He wrote up an app because of it. Um, and he might have got a little more on that app. I'm not sure. I'm sure he would have wrote the app, but this probably helped those things along a whole lot more. Uh, Dan Henderson, I helped him today too. $660 was his ABS. That's how much money he saved later in her bill. He said what he got in the house, that she was not going to talk about insurance whatsoever. And you know what? He walked out of there with an $18 app. Not a lot, but it's something. It's better than nothing, right? And he saved her that money and he made an impression on her. She was tickled to death when he left. And I'm like, he's going to post something up about that later. Nancy Krause, I don't have her savings. We've done it two or three times. She saved people quite a bit of money so far. So I'm proud of Nancy. Proud of all you guys. Uh, I'm still going to keep going. I got about four or five more I'm going to touch on here tonight. Uh, Stephen Brown, uh, he was in two different houses. He told me he saved $1,800 is what he saved on annual bill savings. What's up, Sam? $1,800 he saved one family in annual bill savings, guys. That's a lot of money. I mean, think about the impact we're having on these people. We're going to make final expense great again. Hey, Joseph, what's going on, buddy? Um, Justin... Um, Justin Robertson saved a lady $840 and he got a $1,944 app from doing it. I mean, you know, that he freed up the money and she got the amount of insurance she wanted. He was, she was going to buy a policy, but um, when he first got in the house, he saved her the money on the on that and it helped her get what she, she could afford, what she actually wanted. Rob Hacker, $648 in annual bill savings on two different households. Roy Love, $960 in annual bill savings in one household. Guys, this is working. These people are just getting started. You know, every home I've been in this week, I've posted something up and I've helped people save money whether I've done anything or not. That's something I want to talk about first here real quick and then we're going to get into the insurance 101 form. Really quick, guys, and if you missed this, make sure they go back and watch this. 
let me explain something to you. You don't walk in a house and have a mentality if I, if I don't have any insurance deal here that I'm not going to do this. If you're going to adopt this, then, then, then we need to make sure we keep this pure for everybody, okay? Keep it pure for everybody in the group. Keep it pure for everybody that's going to do this because we're going to help some people doing this, okay? And I don't care if you walk in the house and the priest is over giving their last rights. If you walk in the house and thinking you might sell insurance, even though you know you're not going to sell insurance, do it anyway, guys. Otherwise, we're, we're it's wrong, number one. Number two, people don't want the impression. Hey, Jason, what's up, buddy? Hey, Alan, Carla. Brad, you guys are all here. If you don't go in the house and you don't do this every single time, make it the first thing you do. You go in here and you do this regardless whether you're going to make money in the house or not. I walked out of three houses the other day, saved them all money, didn't, didn't write up a single lap. And I didn't care because you know what? It paid off later down the road. The focus, the key is to make sure you do it every single time. Because if you go in there with the mentality that you're doing it out to get an app, or you go in there and be like, hey, I can help you save money and I can maybe get, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this because it's the right thing to do. Okay, pretend it's, a, I mean, if somebody walked in your grandmother's house and she was struggling and she needed the extra money, wouldn't you want them to do it for her? You treat everybody else's grandmother the same way you want yours treated. Hey, John, what's up, buddy? Um, it's important that we keep that in mind, guys. I mean, if it has to be considered a disclaimer. That, look, this is, we're not doing this to sell insurance. We're doing this to help the people out. Be able to earn their business and earn their trust is just, is just the benefit of what we're doing. That, that's the reward in what we do. But you may do this in three or four houses and not get anything out of it, but I promise you the reward will be there. What comes around goes around. That's how things work in this world. All right, so now we're going to get into the next phase. Uh, you guys that have seen the You Like Saving Money video, before we get started, I'm going to show this to everybody. If you don't have this, you see this? If you don't have this, go to renfex.com. And Chris, if you're helping me, Chris Morell is my partner in crime, man. He's the guy that helps me make my blog. Helps He helps keep my blog look good so I don't look like a dumb hillbilly. He's also the guy that helps me make sure you guys get all this stuff in a timely manner and make sure that it looks good. So, um, Chris, um, if you could post up that up there real quick, the website, it's renfex.com. You guys go on there, put your name in where your name goes, put your email in and say, send me the insurance 101 form. He'll, he's sitting there waiting on you right now if you don't have it yet. So make sure you get those tonight, guys. Um, and I guess now we're going to get into saving people money. Uh, we went from saving people money, now we're going to get into how you transition into insurance with that because that's important, right? Because a lot of times when they're talking about silly things and things that don't matter, if you're going to help these people save money on their bills, they're going to be ready to listen to the information that's coming out of your mouth, okay? If people don't like you, they don't listen. They don't listen. They don't buy. That's how it works. Well, if you help them save real money and put their money back in their pocket, they're at least ready to retain the information you're giving them, okay? That means when you get ready to talk about insurance, they're ready to listen. Now, when you get ready to talk about insurance, it's not about selling insurance still. It's about helping them understand how their life insurance works. And how many people here, give me some um, likes if you've had this happen. How many homes are you guys in every single day? Hey, Matt, buddy. How many homes are you guys in? Hey, Todd, I see you. How many homes are you guys in every single day? And they don't have a freaking clue how insurance works. They think because they have life insurance, they got life insurance till they die. That's what people think. So what we're going to do is we're going to explain to them in terms they can understand how life insurance works. It's very simple. This form, listen, if you look at this and you do this for a living and you can't take a quick look at this and know what exactly that it means, then you probably need a new job. I'll be honest with you. You need to know the basics. And these are just basic one-on-one stuff. It's very simple. And I know all these go into more detail, but we made this for a reason. Because when you show this to the client, Hey, Leo, what's up, buddy? When you show this to the client, hey, honey, see, there's my sweetheart right there. Hey, Nicole. Um, when, you, when you show this to the client, it helps them to understand what's going on. It gives them just the basic fundamentals of how life insurance works because you know as well as I do, two out of the three usually die before they do. They're not, there's nothing wrong with them. All kinds of insurance has a place, which we'll get into in a minute. And even whole life has some issues where if they have loans and stuff that it doesn't work out. So these are the things that I'm going to explain to you, how I explain it to people. When I'm done explaining, just like when I told them to go get their cable bill, they went and got it. They were okay with that. I saved them money. They ran and got their phone bill. And once I educate them on insurance, they usually just get up and go get their life insurance policy so I can at least look at it and make sure everything's in order. So that's what we're going to go through tonight is I'm going to explain to you how I do my transition to insurance. And I'm gonna to try to keep my iPad going so I don't get off track too bad. But guys, I am so excited. Um, anybody that missed the first part of it, go back and listen to the first. We talked about how we're gonna do this at every house when we do it, not just some of them. But to get started, so now here we are, guys. We've just saved these people money on their bills, okay? And they, they've saved a few bucks here and there, and they're all excited about the money that they've saved. They're liking you. They're feeling secure that you're there to genuinely help them. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna educate them on how, how does insurance work, right? What are the basics to life insurance? Well, they haven't been to school. They haven't failed their test the first time like 90% of us did according to statistics. And there's people that I know might, might have taken it a few more times than that. You know, myself, I wasn't, studying is not my favorite thing to do. But um, the first thing we're gonna do is I start off with my client. 
and um, you've saved them money on their bills. Now, most people think because they have life insurance, like we said, it's good till they die. I do my best to give them a simplified explanation. That's what we're going to talk about now. I learned, I've learned these terms and, and getting licensed, but like I was telling you, most people don't have that opportunity. So the first thing I do, now, Miss Betty, I'm going to break down insurance for you. It's insurance for dummies. And then I'll laugh a little bit and I'll say, no, I'm just kidding. It's insurance 101. But the thing is, is about life insurance, honey, is most people don't know, understand that it's not going to be there forever. So the first thing I do is I start going through insurance with them. So we're going to talk about term first, okay? Term life insurance, and this is just a basic explanation. I know it works a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways to get term insurance. And one of the things that I tell my clients is, you know, when I was younger, I was working um, with some family members and um, I was making really good money, probably spending more than I make like most of us do. You know, we start making good money. We spend 10 times that. We're young and we're goofy. But I had debt, and if something happened to me, I didn't want my wife's family or my wife to have to marry some other guy that wasn't as cool as I was in order for her to um, be taken care of. So I took out a really large life insurance policy on myself, one for like a million dollars. And that million dollars, if something happened to me, my house would have been paid off, my kids would have been put through school, and when you guys really get to know me, and my wife can probably contest to this, it would take a long time to get over me, so she needs a little nest egg there for that, okay? So, I just, when I explain it to people, it's, it's pretty much that's what I'm saying to them, you know? There's a place for all this stuff, and, and but what happened after 15 years, I knew my rate was gonna go up an average of eight to 10 times more than I was paying. I knew that. And at the, en at the end of the 15 years, most of my debt's paid, or, or my kid's college has already decided, so we don't need a million dollars worth of life insurance anymore, okay? And that's typically for most people, depending on how things turn for them. So I explained to them how the fact that I have a story and everybody's got a story. You can borrow mine, say you heard one until you get one of your own if you don't have one of your own, but explain to them in, a term they can, in a terms they can understand why they would have a term policy, okay? Now, the typical client we deal with when it comes to final expense, for instance, they don't need a term policy. Most of them don't have debt. They just wanna make sure their family doesn't get stuck with the burial bill and that's what we're out to do. But term insurance has a place. And there's a place to put that and there's a time for it. You, if you need it, that's the right thing to have. Now, the next thing I talk to them about is whole life, but let's get back to term. The word term, the word terminate, kind of short for it. Most term policies will, will lapse or, or expire in according to statistics, anywhere between seven to two percent of the time is all they're ever gonna pay out. All the companies aren't gonna, you know, get together and put their numbers together, but the average is about two to seven percent of the time is all they ever pay out for a term policy. It's not meant to be there. It has an expiration date like milk, egg, and cheese, right? And think about this, the word expiry, and I talk about that in the article, you know, and this makes me feel smart because I, I studied up on this one. The word expiry is the British English version of the word expiration. Now, why is that the only British English word that they use? You ever think about that? Why is the only British English word they use expiry? And here's what most people think, and I tell my client this. Now, when you've seen that word expiry, you probably figure that might mean expiration. Hmm. I'm going to ask him if that's what it means. Now, he'll think I'm dumb. I'll just go ahead and sign. And I say that, and they laugh. You know why they laugh? Because comedy is, comedy is an exaggeration of reality. So when I say that in a joking way, that we've all done that. We've all had that w weird thought, and we didn't want to ask the question. So we've signed something without really knowing for sure, even though we weren't. But the idea, it does mean expiration. But they don't realize their policy may have an expiration date on it. Some people are okay with having that type of life insurance as long as they understand it, but most don't understand it. And the key is, is understanding what it is that you're paying for. And that's what I like to know. Did you know that your policy was going to do that? Did you know this was gonna to happen to your policy? Because it's not the problem isn't the insurance or the carriers. The problem is the way that people are made to understand things. And the key is to make sure they're fully informed and educated on what's going on. And that's what we wanna do. The next thing I talk about is whole life insurance, guys. I get into whole life, I say it's right there in the title, it's there for your whole life. Now. Typically, now look, if somebody's retired and they got a half a million dollar house and they got a half a million dollars in the bank and they've got a big investment fund that they're living on, most likely they're not gonna buy a whole life policy. It's not the world's greatest investment, we get that. But a lot of the people in this country are, don't have that kind of income and if something happens to them, they don't want their face to get plastered onto a, a mason jar or be stuck on the GoFundMe page hoping somebody will pay for the funeral because most of those people, they've been on there for two or three years and they still haven't gotten any money. And that's a sad way to have to leave this world. So a whole life policy has a purpose. It's for people that need the money for their burial expenses. The younger you buy it, the cheaper it is. And that's what I explained to them. You know, if we could teach our kids to buy this insurance when they're younger, in their 20s or 30s, or when their kids are born, you can put a 10 pay on them, have it paid off in 10 years for a t for a tenth of what it would cost to make 65 to get a half of that amount. They need to be educated. Let's teach people how this stuff works. Because if they understand how it works, then they can have that kind of policy put in place at a young age when they're making more money. We want people to um, 
to have insurance that's going to be there. Number one. Number two, whole life has some benefits and it has some advantages, but there's also some disadvantages because a lot of the clients in the world that take out a whole life policy, the problem with that whole life policy is they don't realize that if they borrow money against it, that they got to pay that money back. And if they don't pay that money back, that money is going to build and build and build interest. And if they're not paying the interest payment, then that interest is going to come out of the cash value until the amount of the loan is greater than the cash value. Then the policy is going to lapse. That's what's going to happen. And I explained that to them. That's how this type of insurance works. I don't even know what kind of insurance they have yet, but I'm explaining to them and breaking this down. And you can see the lights start to go off in their head. Okay, They start to realize what's going on here because what I want them to do is I want to entice them and give them enough information so they will let me look, trust me enough to look at their life insurance. I never asked for it because we talked about that last week. What happens if you ask somebody um, about their life insurance in the first few minutes when you're in your house, huh? It's down there at the bank in a safety deposit box. And like we said last week, if they didn't see it on Matlock, they've never even probably seen a safety deposit box. So it's not a bad thing. I don't think I've ever been in a room with a safety deposit box. So it doesn't make anybody special, but that's just how it works, you know? But whole life builds cash value usually after the second year. It'll build, build, build. Slowly but surely it'll build cash value. But once they take a loan out on that, they need to understand if you're gonna borrow money, Know if you can pay that money back. If you can't, you're better off cashing out the policy and starting over at that young age instead of waiting eight or 10 years for the interest to consume your policy. Now you're paying three times more and your health issues may be worse. So if you have that type of insurance, you wanna make sure you don't have loans. And I've also seen scenarios where people thought they had, um, a matter of fact, I had this lady and I knocked on her door and she came to the door. She wouldn't even let us in. She talked to us through the crack. Me and my son found her like $900 on the unclaimed property network. We filled out the form now. She opened her door from here to here because she started like us a little bit more. She went and got her policies. She handed them through the crack in the door and opened it up to about here so she could actually see what we were looking at. When I asked her if she had a loan on her policy, she about slapped me. Now, I didn't got this, found this lady some money she didn't know she had. They didn't pay me for that. I just found it for her. She, went, she left me on the porch, but when I called her company, which we'll get into here in a second, when I called her company, she found out she had a loan on the policy. And what it was is where she had switched over a checking account like 25 years ago. It was like a two or $300 loan, two or $300 worth of um, loans came out of the policy to cover, cover the premium because it took them three months to transfer that over for some reason. Don't know why, don't know what the reason was behind that, if somebody dropped the ball, but it did happen. Well, now she owed like, I don't know, close to $3,000 on those loans. She was ticked off, but I wasn't the one that told her. We'll get into that in a second. So whole life insurance is there for your whole life. As long as you pay your premium, it pays 100% of the time. The only time that you can run into issues with whole life insurance is if in a scenario to where you borrow money against it and you don't pay the money back, it can consume your cash value. If you die before the cash value is gone, they will deduct the amount of loan from your death benefit. People don't know this, guys. I sound simple. I know you know it, but you have to explain to them these things so they understand what they're spending their money on. Would you want to go buy something and find out later that what you bought was completely nothing that you'd been that you'd expected it to be? Huh? What if you bought a home and if you paid on it for 30 freaking years, you find out that, hey, after year 30, you don't own it anymore. The bank owns it now. I mean, it's that drastic for these people because they're counting on this to protect their family. A selfish person can pay for life insurance. And that means they got one person they care about more than their self. And that means a, to pay for life insurance is an extremely unselfish act. It's extremely unselfish. And if you're not doing it and you're not doing it to make people better than to help them, then you probably shouldn't be doing this job because there's a lot more agents coming through every day now. And if we don't, if people don't know they're spending their money on, people keep ending up in these situations, something's gonna happen, you know? Things are gonna be re-regulated. So if we do it right now, then we don't have to worry about that happening. Let's regulate it ourselves so we can keep ourselves going because there is a lot of money to be made. And there's a lot of families that need to be protected and that's what we do. Um, when it comes to whole life, another thing about whole life, just like term, there's different types of term, there's different types of whole life. You have a guaranteed issue. When it you gotta wait two years to get your money, but you do get 10%. If you got somebody in bad enough health and they can't afford the funeral costs and they wanna start putting something back, worst case scenario, if they passed away in the first two years, they get the extra 10%. You can't put your money anywhere and get an extra 10%, okay? For starters, there's not an account you can do. People that buy the type of insurance, the whole life insurance, typically, they don't have, they can't afford to put money back anyway. So by putting that money, a little something back and get that extra 10%, if they had to, worst case, after the two years, they get the full benefit. Then you see we have graded or modified policies also. Graded or modified, depending on what the carrier likes to call it, is where they may get 30% the first year, 70% the second year, the full benefit the third year. And it gives them an opportunity to still have something in place. Depending on how you do it, if you're, if you're a captive agent or if you're a broker, it's about finding what's in their best interest and doing that for them. Um, but number one rule is never take somebody out of a permanent policy if they have health issues and put them with something that's worse because that's going to be part of the problem that we're having. If you see somebody doing it, go smack them in the head. 
or call me, I'll come smack them for you. I'm just kidding. Don't smack somebody because then they'll be blaming me later. Um, the next thing I like to talk about, and this is my favorite one to talk about because people get really confused on these, and I have recovered so much freaking money on these policies, and I've seen some, some, some train wrecks too, guys. It's called Universal Life, okay? Universal Life, and I kind of make a little joke about it. It's where term and whole life get married and they have a little baby, and it's a good little whole life baby beginning. It's building cash value. They're gaining interest on it. It's a great thing, but what happens, it makes a hard turn later, and the cost of insurance gets to be too high. And I tell this story, and this is a true story. The first home I was ever in, the guy that I was working with came down to train me. He drove down. This was one of my old Dish Network customers. I get there. He's, he's in a wheelchair. He's got a, he's got a foot amputated. He's got two kinds of cancer, a blood disease. I mean, he's in terrible shape. He's 80 years old. Well, back in the 70s and 80s, these, these universal policies were a great idea. I mean, they were an excellent idea back then because the interest rates were so freaking high, people were drawing 16 and 17% on them. And they were they were sticking their money in there. They were taking all their money and sticking in these policies. This guy actually invested $20,000 in the year I was born in 1971, $22,000 out of his railroad pension. And he went to start his construction company for a $100,000 policy for him and his wife. Um, he paid on it for all those years when he was 80 something years when he turned 79 right before he turned 80 He got a letter in the mail from the insurance company it says your policy has lapsed uh, You need another twenty three hundred dollars just to keep it finish up this month And his next payment was gonna be like four grand or something insane He had had it so long that the cost of insurance had got up to a couple thousand dollars a month And they consumed all the cash in the policy and canceled his policy He had had a close to a hundred thousand dollars in cash value in his policy at one point and that's sad. He had all that money in it for a $100,000 policy and they consumed it. Now, it's not a problem if that's going on and you understand that's what's going on. But the problem is he didn't know. He can't get insurance. Life didn't go like he expected it to go. Now, his wife's sitting here in tears thinking that a week before that, they thought they were going to get $100,000 if something happened. It was a bad shape he was in. Financially, she really needed that money so she could pay off the debt. They're never going to get it. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing that they're going to get from that. I've also been in homes where um, I found a 72-year-old man, and I swear he had a, a 55000 left of the 80000 in cash value he had. And when I showed it to him, when he figured it out, you know what he did? He put it into a single premium, and they're getting a $74,000 policy for it. So there's a lot of cool stuff out there like that, guys. You just got to understand what you're selling. Understand your product, understand how it works, and make sure you can translate that to the client. This right here is going to make it easy for you to explain to them. These are just the basics. I understand there's a whole lot more involved in this, but they don't even understand this much. And as simple as this is, if you can get them to understand that much of it, they're going to want to go get their policy and see what's going on with it. And that's what your job is to do is, is explain it. If you do this right, they're going to run and get the policy. You never have to ask for it, okay? Now, I do this little weird thing when I talk about universal policies, policies okay? I'm like, you start off here and then... And now that's why I made this new form because it kind of shows that, you know, your cash value slowly but surely builds. And I'm showing here every year how much cash value you seem to get. And it gets a little bit higher because you get interest on the money that gained from, you know, the total from the year before. But eventually the cost of that insurance gets to be higher than what goes in. And then money goes away until it's gone. The cash is gone. The policy has gone. They have no insurance and nobody ever taught on that. So... Once I do this, they're curious what they have. They run and get their insurance policy. Once they run and get that insurance policy, the next thing that I do is I call the carrier. I look it over when I see what's going on. Let's say it's a UL policy, for instance. And if you want to get a pen and write these things down, I think I've wrote them down on the, on the article if you've read it. Let me pull it up so I don't miss anything. But the first thing I'll ask the insurance company, like when they get on the phone, I like to, I like for everybody to tell them themselves. I'm not gonna, I, I don't want to be the guy that told somebody that's been paying for their insurance for 30 years it's jacked up. It's like that one lady. I didn't tell her she had a loan or I didn't tell her it was a problem. I called the company, I asked the right questions, and they told them the truth because they can't lie to them, so they told them the truth. These people get mad. I had one lady throw her remote control at my cell phone when she found out that it was a UL policy. It was a $10,000 UL policy. She was so mad she couldn't see straight. She had like maybe two or three years left and she was like 65 years old. It was going to cost her even more to replace it later. Why would you get a $10,000 UL policy? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me because she planned on having it till she died. She was on a very fixed income. She, to have to change it later, her payment was going up like 15 times what she was paying. But nobody told her. So what I'll do is I'll get the insurance company on the phone. I get the client to verify it's okay to talk to me. And I always leave it on speakerphone. First thing I ask is, okay, well, how much money? I, kinda, I get, act a little silly because sometimes companies like to be weird. I've had a couple of them be rude and cuss me out and hang up on me. Some of the smaller ones, the, the bigger companies are always very professional and they just give the information out. They're not as uptight about it. But the first thing I'll ask is, what type of insurance is it? Is it whole life? Is it universal life? Is it term life? Oh, it's whole life. Now, is it just regular whole life? 
Well, yeah. Or is it a variable adjustable whole life? Because, right, you know what a variable adjustable whole life is, right? It's just a UL policy. They changed, some companies have changed the name of because people were scared of them, I guess. I don't know why they did it. I'm just making an assumption there, but that's what goes on, I'm assuming. That's the first question. What type of insurance do you have? Wait, is it? Say, so tell me the type of insurance. The second question I ask is, what? how much money she get if she dies? I kind of act like a little bit of a hillbilly in the beginning. And they're real confident with their hands. They're like, oh, it's about $10,000. I'm like, oh, that is awesome. Okay, great. Now, how much is her monthly premium on that? I'm just, I'm a, I'm, we're going to pretend this is a UL policy. So let's say she got a $40,000 in death benefit, and it's a UL policy, a universal life. They're straight up about it. Let's say so. And I say, well, how much is her monthly premium? Now, her monthly premium was $52 a month. I'll say, great. Now, does she ever have to pay any more money a month? And they say, no, she never has to pay any more money a month because that's language that people hear all the time. She never has to pay any more money a month. The key word is has to. And ask, the, ask them the question like that because they'll still answer it with the same confidence. Okay? Now, if they say, though, that's what's going on, the fourth question that you want to ask them is, are there any loans against the policy? All right? So loans, L-O-A-N-S. Okay, great. And then I'll ask them how much is, if there's a loan on it, if there's not a loan on it, either way, how much is her cash value? Now I'll ask that question first, and then I ask surrender cash value. Now, once I get those two numbers, if they're the same number, that means there's no, that, that confirms there's no loans on the policy, right? Now, here's, the, here's where it gets crazy. I say, well, let me ask you this question here. You said she never, let's say it's a UL policy, you said she never has to pay any more money a month. They're like, nope, she never has to pay no more money a month. I said, well, I'm looking at this, and this is a universal life policy. She's had it for 20 years. And by what I'm looking at here, according to the, but to the guaranteed and the non-guaranteed, because a lot of times they like to talk to people like to talk about the, the non-guaranteed option that's in there in the illustration. But I'm on, I want to know what's going on on the guaranteed side. What are you guaranteeing this? Because interest rates are so low right now, people are just getting their basic 3.5%, 4%, whatever it is, whatever their guaranteed rate is. So I'm like, if she continues to only pay in the $52 a month, and what I'm looking at right now, she is about pretty much breaking even. So she's not even gaining cash value. Her cost of insurance is exactly what's coming into this policy. Once that policy gets to the point where the cost of insurance is more than what she's paying in, where does that money come from? Because she don't have to pay any more money a month. So she's not paying any more money a month at this point. If that's the scenario, where does that money come from? And a lot of times they'll put me on hold. And they'll him haul around. Or they'll back up on me. Oh, we, we don't know. I had to call somebody, pass me around to somebody else. And I've, I've had everything in the world happen. And they get back on the phone and I'll say, listen, I'm sitting here with Ms. Johnson. You're on speaker. She wants to know what happens to the, where's the money come from? Talk to her like this is your granny. They'll say, well, we take it out of the cash value. Then I will mute my phone. I was like, did you know that that was what was going on? Did you know they're taking the money out like that? She said, no, they never knew. I mute the phone and I'm like, let me ask you another question. If the cash value gets consumed by the cost of insurance going up because you said she never has to pay any more money a month, what happens to that policy? Well, sir, I, I'm not really qualified to tell you that. I hear that one a lot or I've been hung up on a few times. But I'll be like, listen, tell this lady what happens to the policy when the cash value is gone. Because guess what? You don't want to be the bearer of the bad news. You don't want to be the one that told them that their policy has, has a problem. They've been paying this thing for years. So I look over and the customer's getting upset. I can tell they're upset because they see they've been trusting these people all these years and they didn't realize this. all these things were going on. What happens to the policy? Well, we will cancel it. It will lapse. Okay, thank you. And then um, I'll, I'll make sure we got the policy numbers and I'll end the call. Now I ask them, did you know that that policy was going to die be possibly before you did? Because that's what it boils down to in the end. I know that it's, that it's always better to have a bigger policy. And I know some people believe in investing the money. And that's a good idea if you have a good income and you've got the kind of money to support that. But if you're at a lower income type people, like some of the filing expense people, listen, they can't afford for that to happen. They can't afford to replace a policy, you know, when, you know, when they're 80, 75, 80 years old. So the key is, and my favorite question is, did you know that this policy could possibly die before you? No, I thought the policy was going to be there until I was dead. And that's the, that's, that's, the, that's the notion that people have on their mind. And that's how they assume it is because it's called life insurance. They don't understand the differences. Lord, I'm still learning about some of the stuff on the differences because there's so many ins and outs. Term, you've got the, you've got reducing term where they tell them the payment's the same. You've got, you've got term 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 year terms. The people get the thing in the mail. I'll see if I got mine in here because it is tattered. I carry this thing around with me if I got it in here right now. Yeah, this thing is tore all to pieces. I carry it around. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with these policies. If you want more insurance, it's a good deal but the thing is if you look it's color bold and pretty and spaced and carrying on but then when you get down here to read a small print it's all going right and left and back and forth lines here and carrying on 
Every time I meet somebody who has one of these, the first thing I do is I pull this out and I say, how much insurance are you going to get for your age? Oh, I got this one right here. Okay. They might have only had it for a couple of years. All right, what's going to happen? I said, now, how much is that payment going to be? Oh, it's that much right there. How long? That's what it always is. Okay. Read on down. They read down. Their eyes jump down to that part that says, save an extra 12 bucks a month. No, back up and read that part there that your eyes don't really want you to read because it don't flow very well. They read it and they're in shock. I've replaced several hundred of these. I've maybe had two people that knew about that. Two. These people are on a fixed income. They don't want to wait 10 years to replace this because if they wait till they're 70 or 80, some of them some last till they're 75, some until they're 80, then they cancel them and they don't know that. Well, most policies, a lot of term policies, are convertible till 70, but the policy doesn't hit its peak or doesn't hit its the end of its term until they're 75. So they still can't convert it at that point because they missed their window. They didn't know that. They look on there and the policy may say it's good to your 95. Yeah, it is if you can handle the payment. But when you start adding up the payment off of the off of the illustration, they're in shock because they didn't know. So what you have to do is learn your products, learn how they work, learn how to read the policies and make sure they know what they're spending their money on. Like I said, it's not the insurance company's fault. I'm not going to blame the agents, but somebody failed somewhere this client because they don't know what they're spending their money on. Make sure they know what they're spending their money on. Make sure they're happy with where this policy is going. If not, the company, all you did was you was a good guy that came in and educated them. You helped them save some money in their bills. They trust you now. And then you got the company to tell them the truth in terms of we blocked out there for a minute, but we are back. Anyway, so they know what's going on with the policy. If they understand how their money's being spent and they know where it's going, then they can make a decision based on facts. Just give them the facts, guys, and then after you understand what they want the policy to do, then you can come back and make sure that you show them their choices and their options. Don't oversell them. Don't sell them more than they need. Don't tell them that the funerals are going to be, and that all funerals are going up. No, they're not. Funerals are actually getting cheaper because big corporations are buying a lot of these companies out. You know why? Because they make money on the baby boomers coming in, and they're going to make money on the baby boomers going out. That's just how it works. I didn't make the rules. This is how it is. And this is a, these are the things that I've observed since I've been here. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you educate these people. You save these people money on their bills. You don't have to do no tricks. You don't, you don't have to talk about stuff that don't matter. You don't have to make them feel good for five minutes. Save them money on their bills and do it, do it wholeheartedly. Do it to genuinely help these people. After you do that, educate them how their insurance works. And even if you know you can't sell them insurance, make sure you look it over so they know where this policy is going to go. Because if it's going to lapse within the next two or three months, they need to know. They need to know how to plan for this, not get blindsided. You know, people die and the family don't have the money for the funeral because, oh, mama had $10,000 coming. We only got $3,000. That's messed up because somebody dropped the ball somewhere and didn't educate their clients. We're going to have, if we don't make changes in this industry and we start making sure people understand what they're spending their money on, then we're not going to be able to keep doing what we're doing. It's not going to hold up forever. You know, something's going to happen. Something's going to break. There's there's like tons more of insurance agents doing this now. You know, in 2007, I was telling somebody earlier, in 2007, there were, um, I think, like under 100,000 licensed agents. And then like 2015, there was like 1.5 million new licensed agents in the country. Do you see that if we don't start teaching these people to do this right, where this can go for the people that are? Huh? Things are going to change. People are going to step in. They're going to say, hey, we're going to have to re-regulate this. I know we got re-regulated in the Dish Network because we were doing a third-party contract and people took advantage of it. You know who stepped in? The, um, uh, was the, the Attorney General stepped in and said, no more third-party contracts. Then we were just hung out to dry because some people took advantage of the system. So we, let's make sure we help these people. Let's make sure we do it the right way. We go in, we save them money, we educate them, and then let the chips fall where they may. If there's money to be made, then they will let you make that money there. And I promise you, you will make more money doing it that way. I wrote up 180000 in premium in four and a half months. That is not a joke. I won Rookie of the Year because of my company. I'm telling you, the opportunity is there to make a difference and to make more money. People like to buy from people they trust. Okay? Being a good salesperson isn't being about being a good talker. It's about making the choices that need to be done, educating your people, making sure they understand what they're spending their money on, and then give them the choices. They'll walk away from somebody they paid for 30 years. They'll walk away from an agent that they, they thought had their back for 30 years when they understand the truth. I've seen it time and time again, guys. So I don't have a whole lot more left to say. I hope you got something from this. If you have questions, private message me. Post them on here. I will sit up all night answering all your questions the best that I can. Um, if you didn't get this, renfex.com. Print this off. And I printed off on really shiny paper, too. I don't know if you can tell that or not. I mean, I printed off really nice. I put it in my presentation book, and I go through these items one at a time with them, and I make sure they understand what they're spending their money on. I'm going to tell you something. Here's a little secret about UL policies, and you'll know. Say, now, the thing about a UL policy is it's going to do one of two things. You're going to get a statement every year on it telling you how much money you're making, or you'll get one quarterly. And when you get that statement in, 
a lot of people look at it and they toss it. They say they got money, but the key is to lay those statements out. Lay those statements out and start looking and see how your money gains or losses or grows or not. If one year you gained 100, the next year you only gained 50, guess what? That policy's already starting to go backwards. By the next year, you've lost 25. So make sure no people know what they're saying or spending their money on. Oh, uh oh, I got a question here. It's a long one. I'll make sure I get this one here. My apologies. I'm confused. How did you transition from cable to phone to insurance? I'm listening and taking notes, but I didn't hear it. Okay, good question. So once I save them the money, I say, Let's, look, look, Ms. Johnson, now we've saved you the money. My, next, my actual job to do here, I, we like to do that as a courtesy because people need the help. Now my next job is here is I'm gonna educate you on insurance. We're gonna call this insurance for dummies and then I will laugh and I will say, no, it's just insurance 101. But everybody I meet, 90% of the homes I'm in, people don't really understand what they're spending their money on. I'm gonna make help you to understand what you're spending your money on and I'm gonna get the people that you work with every day or the companies you work with, they're gonna to explain to you. I'm gonna get them to tell you in your terms what it is you're paying for. And I educate them. Once I've educated them, they're all over it, guys. They get excited. They want to know. They jump up and run and get the thing. You don't have to ask them. It's like I told you. They get the one bill, they get they get a reward. The second bill, they get a reward. And I'm telling you, you've taught them to fetch. And I mean that as a joke, no disrespect, but you actually teach them to fetch because I don't even I have to ask them to go get it. I don't even have to throw the ball. They go fetch it for me. They bring it back because every time they've done that, they've got a reward. Now, sometimes that reward may not be in their favor, but just being educated on what's going to happen in policy is their reward. So, guys, get excited. Get your insurance one-on-one form. We made these up. We made it simple just to help teach your customer how things work. And read the article. There's a lot of information. If you missed anything I did say, the article on there that's got a picture of uh, Will Farrell dressed up as the elf. He looks all confused. Uh, how do I transition into insurance? R-E-N-F-E-X dot com. And we can post that link up here. It's posted on all the different things I post on there. I don't mean to post this stuff to death, man, but I think we got, guys, I, but I think we got a good message to get out here. And I think we can make final expense great again. I'm excited about it. Hey, Mario, what's up? Hey, Rebecca, how are you doing? Is Clay on here too? Because I'm going to go back and look. Hey, Chantel, appreciate you guys being here. Um, next week, we got some more cool stuff we're going to talk about. Um, I think I talked about it earlier to somebody. But next week, I'm going to tell you how to get free referrals in every house. And guess what? I am going to... Um, you have a question. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. But next week, we're going to talk to talk to you about how to get free referrals in every house. And guess what? I've made you a form for it. So you're going to get a form for it, too. And it works. I get free referrals in every single house. I don't even have to work hard for it. I get them. But, guys, I appreciate it. I will see you next um, next Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Get excited. Let's learn something. And, guys, listen, if you haven't, you've got my phone number, 859 583 7697. 859 583 7697. That's my cell phone. Send me your information. I promise you right now, you're going to see some people start to put up posts. Oh, plus, I forgot one more announcement. I'm getting ready to start a new group. It's just a subgroup of Cell Team 6, and it's only going to be there, and nobody's going to be posting but me in it. But you got these guys are going to start posting up their, um, their, uh, their testimonies on how they're helping people in the houses, and that, that's going to be an open group. Anybody can go in and look. Nobody's going to be allowed to post in there for the sole purpose of, I just want it to be testimonies open to everybody to come in and look at of how people are saving money. So you can go over and reference and see it. If you want to get motivated, do that. Because I helped like three or four people today. And um, Dan, yep, Dan called me today and we saved him some money and he got a little policy out of it. Um, it works, guys. I sit on the side of the road for three hours today helping these guys learn how to do this. And the only thing I want to do is I want to see it posted up here because we need to inspire each other to do that. And make sure you're doing it to help the people. Don't do it to sell stuff. Just do it to help people. Hey, Clay, what's up? That's my brother. What's up, big brother? Guys, I'm excited. God bless you. Uh, if you have any questions, you got my number, 859-583-7697. How do you get any work done? Really, I know I'm right there with you. Hey, it's going to pay off, man, because we're going to change things, and I, I want to be part of it. And you guys are right here on the front lines. Let's do it. God bless. I'll see you next Wednesday at 9 p.m. sharp. Later.